My name is Arthur Nolan, and welcome to Making It Work. Hi, I'm Arthur Nolan, and as you can see, I'm without Kim today. Well, we have a special guest, and our special guest, his name is Leon Jones. And Leon, we're so happy to have you here on Making It Work. It's my pleasure. Thank okay. you for having me. Okay. Well, today what we want to do is just talk about who Leon Jones is. And can you help us by giving us some insight? Well, uh, you've already said I'm Leon Jones. I'm from Detroit, Michigan. Grew up in the Detroit area, but uh, a lot of people don't know I was South uh, in my formative years. Really? Meaning from birth to maybe seven or eight. What, uh, what part of the South? Uh, my parents were from a little town that's not even on the map anymore. Alma, Georgia, surrounded. Uh, they're not too far from Waycross, Val Auster, okay. up in there. Uh, I can remember vividly we had animals, we had a farm. Really? Uh, you know, I've always been adventurous, ended mm. up falling in a hog pen. <laughs> <laughs> My mom come home one day and I was full of mud, but uh, yeah, we, I mean, we had chickens and uh, it was just a very, very small town. I was telling my wife that uh, this morning that I want to take her down there. Mm. She may not want to come back. <laughs> you know, uh, I think my people run that town. It's mm. so small. But you fell in a hog pen, and that's significant because you still remember that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> after yeah. all these yeah. years. Yeah. You know. And we fall in the hog pen of life. You know, but thank God for our Savior, He can clean us up. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's good. Good segue. Yeah. Well, you know what is it? What are some of the things that you do right now? Well, uh, most people know me for. Musically, okay. A lot of people don't know me personally. They, they, and I guess through music, they think they know the person. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm a family man. Mm -hmm. Love my children. Uh, love my wife. Mm -hmm. uh, and I love people. Mm -hmm. uh, I've had a second chance in life, mm -hmm. uh, and so I relish the fact that the Creator has afforded me the opportunity to use the ability that He's entrusted to me to have impact. Okay. Uh, music. And I'm just a firm believer that whatever ability one has, mm -hmm. when you connect with the creator, creator, he expects you to use it to be impactful wherever you find yourself. And so uh, I love to travel. Mm -hmm. I'm a runner. Mm -hmm. I love staying in shape. Mm -hmm. I love reading. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm, I'm of the philosophy that he who reads the most leads the most. All so, right, that's uh, great. I enjoy reading. Tell us about the second chance. What, what did you really mean? Uh, what I mean was, uh, as most children sometimes in urban areas, they grow up, uh, they see role models that are the wrong role mm -hmm. models. Mm -hmm. uh, and I wasn't any different. I was in a big city, in this case, Detroit. Mm -hmm. And what I deemed successful was guys hustling on the street, okay. uh, that type of thing. Uh, although I was still singing and in, in the, you know, the music world, I found myself venturing off into some things and ended up in trouble mm -hmm. uh, that landed me in prison mm -hmm. uh, at a very, very early age uh, for armed robbery. Okay. And uh, was sentenced to 10 to 15 years. Mm. And uh, Upon arriving there, I, I, I realized quickly that in my mind, I didn't belong there. Mm -hmm. uh, but I took advantage of that opportunity to find out, as you asked me earlier, mm -hmm. who am I? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think most people are afraid of themselves. Mm -hmm. And so I began to delve inside myself with the help of God mm -hmm. to find out that one, I was in his image. Mm -hmm. So that's saying a lot. Mm -hmm. And two, he gave me dominion. Mm -hmm. and I began to weigh those things mm -hmm. and to say to myself, what am I in control of? Mm -hmm. You know, where am I going? Where am I headed? Is this the end of, in and of itself? And so when in answering those questions, I was able to uh, take responsibility, ownership mm -hmm. of past wrongs that I've done mm -hmm. 
and build on that and say to myself, once I was released, I would have impact. And yep. God has afforded me to do that. It must have been pretty devastating, though, when you first entered into prison during that time, yeah. you know, as a young man. Yeah. And, and that was kind of a, a harsh sentence that you were, you were facing at that point. Right. How long did you stay there? Five years. I was okay. released on a special parole. Excellent. They overturned my case, uh, I guess, on good behavior. Mm -hmm. And at that time, they had what they called a parole contract. Mm -hmm. uh, I had to go through a drug rehab. Mm -hmm. I had to... Uh, learn a trade with my hands, and mm -hmm. I uh, that trade is welding. I mm -hmm. learned MIG, TIG, and ARC. Did you? Yes, and uh, then I went through some other programming there that they had. Went back to school, mm -hmm. uh, and so they they realize, and a counselor he says, "Man, you don't belong here. I'm mm -hmm. going to transfer you." Mm -hmm. and so I fought the transfer, mm -hmm. not knowing that God's hand was there. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I arrived in Muskegon, mm -hmm. the gentleman said, look, we're going to submit a, a, a proposal to get you out of here. Mm. And so uh, it went through. Mm -hmm. I was released. And uh, I haven't been back, not mm -hmm. on any charge. Mm -hmm. I've gone back to encourage men and women across the country. A prison ministry. Yes. Okay. You know, well, how did your family handle the situation while you were gone? Of course. They were devastated, mm -hmm. and I and I think when I look back over it, mm -hmm. uh, my dad and I we had a tumultuous relationship, mm -hmm. uh, and I think that drew us closer mm -hmm. to one another. I mean, I didn't realize it, but you know, he he visited me. Excellent. He, he didn't. I mean, he he told me that he loved me, mm -hmm. uh, that I was his son. Mm -hmm. and, you know, all those things, and that 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 counts. Uh, when you're in a situation like that. Mm. And so uh, I have very good support on both sides. Excellent. It's really a special thing when you have the support of your dad. Yeah. You know, especially after making a few mistakes and then yeah. to have him come in and, and say, I love you, that must right. have really meant a lot to you. Right. And he, uh, they got me one of the best lawyers who's now mm. deceased. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they were in my corner. They did what they could do. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, those things go a long way mm -hmm. for uh, a young man mm -hmm. that was in my situation. Mm -hmm. So you indicated that you, at, uh, at different times, will go back to the prisons right. for, to minister to some yeah. of the people that are there now. Yeah. You know, how do you feel when, when you do something like that? I mean, you can put yourself in that situation. Well, initially, you know, it, it brought joy to me because mm -hmm. I, uh, I was in that situation. Mm -hmm. But then as you continue to do it over the years, for me it became so depressing because, one, I was seeing guys repeat offenders. Wow. I mean, it's, it, and when I say repeat offenders, I'm talking about men, mm -hmm. you know, 40, some 50 mm -hmm. years old, mm -hmm. have just made a career out of you know, they become institutionalized. Mm -hmm. Some people can't break that cycle. So I feel fortunate that I was not able to go back. And, and they say, man, I really appreciate what you did mm -hmm. and uh, how you continue to reach out to us. So, and we've done this all over the country with a gentleman by the name of Chuck Colson, mm -hmm. who was in the, involved in Watergate. Mm -hmm. And uh, he started what we know now as Prison Fellowship. Okay. And he, he started the program Angel Tree, mm -hmm. where they bring gifts to the men's children, mm -hmm. men and women's children who are incarcerated. Excellent. And mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, we go all over the world with mm -hmm. this type thing. And, and what I like about Chuck Colson is he will bring in high profile entertainers mm -hmm. and athletes, Michael Jordan. People don't know that about Michael Jordan, mm -hmm. but he would go to prisons. He would. Mike Singletary. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, some of the San Francisco 49ers mm -hmm. and Dallas Cowboys, mm -hmm. and we would play basketball mm -hmm. against some of the inmates there. And mm -hmm. he had all, I mean, high-level uh, entertainers. And mm -hmm. we, I mean, we had a, I mean, we'd have a great time. So it was a, like a learning experience. You, you also talked about the the, the trade of, of learning a particular trade, how to be right. a welder and uh, going back to school. Now, that seems to be something right now that's diminishing uh, with uh, many of our uh, yeah, prisons that, right at this point. That's no longer uh, right. uh, viable as it was then. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, they allowed you to go to college. I know it's a friend of mine. He's out now. He's mm -hmm. 
returning citizens. Mm -hmm. I mean, he had he he, he obtained his master's degree there, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and he's he has his own business, runs a floor shop. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yes, to to answer your question, that's no longer mm -hmm. there. And so, if if a person doesn't understand one who mm -hmm. they are mm -hmm. in God, mm -hmm. two, they don't get some sort of education. And when I say education, mm -hmm. I'm talking about understanding who you are. Mm -hmm. Because there's two kinds of education, mm -hmm. the right kind right, and right. the wrong kind. Right, I've and heard. so I, yeah. uh, you know, I, I encourage people to, mm -hmm. first of all, understand who you are. Mm -hmm. And that's, when you understand that, nothing in this world can stop you mm -hmm. but yourself. Absolutely, because I've heard uh, when you said there's two times, kinds yeah. of education. Uh, I had a gentleman that, that informed me that he didn't know how to steal a car until he went to prison. Right. They showed, told him, right. taught him right. how to do those things, you know. But your mindset, that, that was really an excellent point. You have to really be prepared to have the right frame of mind. Right. And apparently you did, right. you know, and with the support of your family, that was right. really meaningful. Uh, Tell me about the, the music career, you know, what happened there? Well, I think the music career, and that was a good segue, the music mm -hmm. career is, is like anything else, you have to be focused. I mm -hmm. mean, there are a lot of people in entertainment, but they're not focused. Mm -hmm. uh, and in the music world, uh, like sports, uh, you're, you're pampered from the time you get in it mm -hmm. until the time you're out. And so mm -hmm. you, you, I mean, you have lawyers to protect you, mm -hmm. even if you get in trouble. Mm -hmm. Uh, they make those things go away uh, because they have an investment in you. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you remember the actor Robert Downey Jr. Mm -hmm. And yes. I often yeah. tell that story. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he was on drugs but mm -hmm. because of the amount of investment that mm -hmm. they had in him. I mean, they cleaned him up and mm -hmm. the rest is history. And so, yeah, I definitely. mean, that's, that's what happened to me. That's what happened to most people mm -hmm. in entertainment. You, uh, but you have to be focused. Mm -hmm. uh, because you have so much coming at you, mm -hmm. all kinds of people, hang mm -hmm. on us, mm -hmm. uh, and you don't know the difference between the two mm -hmm. because your focus is that hour mm -hmm. or that 30 minute set, mm -hmm. you know, and, and people drive the entertainment, and meaning, you know, the people, fans, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so you don't, in my case, I, I never turn people away. You stand there, you sign mm -hmm. autographs, mm -hmm. you, you talk to people, and people by that thinking that they know you. Mm -hmm. So they'll, you'll be in a city or in a, a town, mm -hmm. they'll show up at a hotel, they'll find out where you are, they right. have parties. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, this, and if you're not focused, you get sucked in mm -hmm. to the things that you see on TV happening to a lot of entertainers. Because, you know, when, as you were, Talking about that, one of the things I was thinking is that it would be easy for you to relapse, you know, into right. that environment, even though, you know, right. it's not, um, say, breaking the law, right. but you attract people that do break the law and right. you attract a certain, uh, I, I guess, following that could easily lead you astray, especially someone that's in trying to straighten their lives out. Right. And see, first of all, and that's why I say it's, it's imperative. You notice in our, during our interview, the first thing I said was understanding who you are. Mm -hmm. See, when I understand that I'm in God's image, mm -hmm. that right there tells me there's certain lines I can't cross. Mm -hmm. And so with that in mind, there's just certain things you're not going to do. Not that they're wrong in and of themselves, but the appearance of it. Mm -hmm. And so you, you, you have to be careful. Uh, that you don't get pulled into everything that yeah. comes with that. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, because people, whether it's gospel music or secular music, people are there and they're catering to you. And let's face it, Arthur, most people, uh, if you never had that happen to you, I mean, you, you like that. You mm -hmm. like going places when you step off a plane, mm -hmm. there's a sign saying Arthur Nolan, mm -hmm. ground transportation. Mm -hmm. You like when you walk into a dressing room, people putting your shoes on. Mm -hmm. I mean, who would? And if you, but if you're not careful, you begin to believe 
that that's who you are. Oh, definitely. <laughs> no, no doubt about right. it. Right. And so you, yeah. you get sucked into it. You know. And, and as you say, uh, to be grounded in the right. Lord, you know, right. is really uh, significant right. to avoid that, tra that trap that Satan has right. for you, you know, trying to pull you back in. Uh, another thing, uh, one of the things that, that I see is... Uh, the different g genres, genres of music. you know, in music, you know, mm -hmm. so, I mean, you've seen a, ch a transition, you know, how do you compare the gospel music today with, say, the gospel music that you grew up with? Well, you know, that's an argument that's age old, and, and here again, you, you have to know who you are, because at the end of the day, a C chord is made up of the same three notes. Mm -hmm. If you play it at church, you know, or if you play it in a club. Mm -hmm. So my my point is, it's what I do with the gift mm -hmm. that God gives me. You know, how do I take that and be impactful in the audience? Like the audiences that we played the last 25 years were predominantly one white, two, uh, they were people who church was not a regular thing okay. for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we find ourselves, in some cases, we stood in front of 80,000 people mm -hmm. at the uh, Silver Dome. Mm -hmm. Then there are other cases where you stood in front of 800. Mm -hmm. So uh, you have to be cognizant of your, of, of your calling. Mm -hmm. And so I, I avoid, you know, this argument about, well, that's not gospel music you're not doing God's will mm -hmm. because one, I'm, I was not there when God told this person mm -hmm. what to do mm -hmm. because you can sing what you hear people arguing about. You can sing amazing grace mm -hmm. all day and be so far from God. Mm -hmm. So what's the difference? Mm -hmm. On the other hand, you can stand out there and sing what's going on, mm -hmm. my brother, and attract people. And once you attract them and you say it was the creator who gave me this idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I've seen that with you. Right. I mean, with, right. with your music, it, it seems to be up, upbeat, right. a little Marvin Gaye, right. you know, right. or Temptations. Right. You know, and I'm sure you must have experienced a, a lot of different ridicule, you know, from yeah. different people. Yeah, I was just in an interview the other day, and uh, the guy, and Mason was, they were interviewing me, and this whole crew was like, man. And it was a guy that I had been trying to touch base with mm -hmm. just to invest in what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And he stopped the interview. He said, look, this guy has been chasing me 10 years and I never knew that his music was like this. Mm -hmm. He says, man, here's my cell phone number. Call me. We need to talk. Mm -hmm. He said, man, this is straight R&B. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he says, I know you catching yeah. flack from the church. I said, yeah, from the black church. Mm -hmm. yeah. He said, man, this stuff is good. Mm -hmm. So from the time that we started singing, uh, we were catching that kind of flag, mm -hmm. but I knew in my heart that God had given us this ministry. Mm -hmm. And so we, we, we continued to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Was it painful? Mm -hmm. Yes, it, yes it was, because we've been places singing and people take the microphone from you. Took the mic from yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> and say, you know, this is the devil's music. Mm -hmm. But they didn't realize they did more damage mm -hmm. to the people in the audience than mm -hmm. they did to us because, I mean, we left and went to the next That's city. what I was about to you say. I mean? It didn't stop you. No, you kept going. Yeah. Right. You know. So, and I think it's, I think it's a uh, person's upbringing because we, we, you and I can't put God in a, mm -hmm. you know, we, and that's what we try to do. Mm -hmm. But God is much bigger than we could ever imagine. Mm -hmm. So we. <laughs> so you keep going and you right. keep going, you know, uh, which brings us to the point now. Where are you with your music? Well, act actually, before we even ask that yeah. question, 25 years of resurrection. Yeah. What happened to you know? Well, uh, it was that was a good ride. You know, that was a, a foundation point for me, mm -hmm. meaning. God used that for me to establish relationships all over the Excellent. world. Excellent. Okay. Uh, because he had a plan beyond mm -hmm. resurrection with mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I hid behind the music 25 years, ducking the call mm -hmm. of preaching. Mm -hmm. And uh, so 
situations occurred where I found myself, it was me. Mm -hmm. And then I was burnt out from touring, okay. Okay. you know, frustrated from other things that was going on. And uh, my dad kept saying, God's waiting on you, Leon. Mm. What are you going to do? And so I really didn't know what to do. And you know, I just started writing and recording songs, different stuff. And a friend of mine, she just started playing the song when mm. the Phipps recorded. Mm. Mm. And people was like, who is that? Mm -hmm. So they started buying a record and the light went off. God said, Leon, this is it. Mm -hmm. And so I picked that up and started, uh, you know, just doing a solo mm -hmm. act and, and speaking. Mm -hmm. And it's working, man. Yeah, so it really I, uh, is. So that's what I'm sticking with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and so that's where but I But it must now. have been hard for you. Oh, man, it was like a, a and, marriage, man. And, and let's clarify something. Resurrection was the singing group that yeah. you was involved with. Yeah. Did you start that group? or yeah. Okay. Yeah, so. I had the... Uh, you know, as people, I was a visionary. I okay. Was, and it, it started with men who uh, were incarcerated and ex-drug abusers. Mm -hmm. That's how we came up with the name, mm -hmm. The Resurrection. Excellent. And, Excellent. I mean, we worked with Kirk Franklin, Fred mm -hmm. Hammond, Stephen Curtis Chapman, mm -hmm. Kathy Tricoli, mm -hmm. East to West. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of everybody. So, it really, it took you all over the United mm -hmm. States and outside yeah. of the United States yeah. as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was powerful. Afforded me some... Uh, Great opportunity mm -hmm. man, and relationships okay. that I'm utilizing right now today. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so back to the question mm -hmm. prior to that. Tell us about what, where your ministry is now, because we're because I was driving down uh, the boulevard. It must have been coming from Belle Isle yeah. uh, in Detroit. And at one point, Kim and I, we were, as we were driving by, we passed this church, and I. And I heard your voice. I said, wait a minute. I know that voice. And you were preaching and singing. At yeah. that point, you were singing. Yeah. And we pulled over and stopped. And we came and, and we, we came to see what right. you were doing. And it was powerful, man. You had this group of people out right. there right on the steps. Right. I mean. And, and, and that's, that's my passion. Mm -hmm. See, I, uh, I, was, you know, I was, I don't know where I was, but I was backstage with, these were secular entertainers and, this guy he, in this group, I mean, prominent band, he he walked by mm -hmm. and I had to just be standing. He said, man, see, you must be an entertainer. Mm -hmm. I, said, I said, how'd you know? He said, man, this is your vibe, man. He, he said, you're a spiritual cat. Mm -hmm. said, mm -hmm. I'm saying, how do you know? He said, man, this is your vibe. You know, I'm catching that. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, that's, I, I like people. I like to see people happy. Mm -hmm. And so I try to use what God has entrusted to me to bring that out. And everybody loves music. Everybody. And so I try to sing about current events. You know, what's going on. That's why, I, I mean, that's what Marvin Gaye did. Mm. That's why that record is still yeah. alive. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? He, he took current events mm. and set music to it. Absolutely. That everybody can relate to. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and it sounds good, yeah. as well yeah. as you, yeah. you know. So that's what I do. I try to be observant. And I uh, heard Sam Cooke say it's by observation. Right. You know, you, you just write about what's happening. And people want to hear a story, you yeah. know, uh, and they, yeah. they enjoy hearing a story of where somebody was down on the right. ground, counted out, right. and then all of a sudden, here you come right back and up again, back. resurrected, right. you know. That's powerful. What about relationships along the way? Ah, man, you make uh, all kind of relationships, as we said earlier, mm -hmm. man. People... One-on-one -on -one uh, relationships. Yeah, one-on-one -on -one relationship. I... Uh, I'm currently, man, I have one, I think I have the best marriage in the world. Excellent. Uh, and God knows us better than we know ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad, when he first saw my wife, he told me, son, look, I don't, I've never been in your business mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. He says, but uh, that's the woman God has chose for you. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we think our parents don't know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he was right. Mm -hmm. Even my mom, everybody that saw. Mm -hmm. And so I couldn't be, you know, happier. In her name? You know, Deborah. Okay. We have two beautiful children, boys. Uh, and God is who he say he is. Excellent. I mean, and I've come to know that in a very, very significant way. Mm -hmm. 
just in the past few months. Mm -hmm. I mean, things that are going down, you know, you know that's God. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Well, one of the things that, that I was thinking about as you were talking about your, your, your marriage is yeah. what happens when Leon is down and you just you pull on that relationship with, between you and Deborah, or, you know, as well as going to, right. to your knees and praying, you know, but what, mo what motivates you? Uh, when things are going down, when they're down for me, I, one, I, I, I try not to transfer that on to mm -hmm. uh, my family. Mm -hmm. But of course, she and I, we can talk, you mm -hmm. know, and of course she listens, mm -hmm. I listen, mm -hmm. and you know, things begin to turn around. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I think, you know, when you talk about one-on-one -on -one relationships, people don't do enough of that. Mm -hmm. we, we live in a world where we're busy, mm -hmm. uh, we're on our smartphones, mm -hmm. and uh, we really don't communicate, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. It's easier to text somebody something than to say it to their face, mm -hmm. you know. So, and, and that's what people are into now. Right. Uh, and so, I like the, you know, the old school way. Mm -hmm. You know, to say, honey, I love you, although I can text you, but I think people like that one-on-one. -on -one. And so, and that, relationships are difficult. I mean, you and your wife, you all are experts in that field. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's why you see so many damaged relationships. People don't want to work yeah. at it. Well, it's, it's work. It's constant work, it's work. you know. And, <laughs> I can, well, I don't even want yeah. to go there. It's yeah. so much work, I mean, you, you know. You, and I'm saying it's, it's, it's the things you never really think about. You come in and you may squeeze a toothpaste there this way. Go. They may not do it that way. Mm -hmm. And then you all get to going back and forth. Mm -hmm. And when you think about it, dang, you know, why did I waste that energy? Mm -hmm. It was just toothpaste. Mm -hmm. And so when people learn how to work on being the best person you can be and out loving your significant other. Mm -hmm. It works, man. Let me ask you one final question in the short mm -hmm. time that we have. We have about a minute. What would you like to leave our listening audience with to inspire them or to give them um, a, a touch of who Leon uh, really relies on? Well, this one thing, this one quote I heard, a professor in college told me this. God has afforded men and women the gift of salvation so we can understand our limitations. Amen. <laughs> Say that again. God has given men and women the gift of salvation mm -hmm. So we can truly understand our own limitations. Man, you're a preacher. <laughs> you're truly a preacher. And yeah. it's a blessing that 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 Leon is here with us. Leon, I want to thank you for being here. You've been truly a blessing for all of us. And I just want to encourage you as you continue on in your ministry. And I want to thank you, the listening audience, for watching Making It Work.